I started in 1984, a small courier company, and didn't realize what it can become in this country, sir. And that was a classic case of a multimodal. We were picking up a parcel from Upper Assam in Jorhat and deliver into tip of Kerala in 18 hours time. So we would pick it up by bus, bring it to Guwahati, take it to commercial flight, bring it to Mumbai, take it to Cochin, and from Cochin drive down again on a train to that. So that was a true multimodal. And sir, so that multimodal system gave 300% increase in the business year after year to that industry. And that industry today has become forced to recon with. It is part of the economy, it is part of the growth, and that's what uh, the multimodal power which it gives. A, rationalization of cost, rationalization and optimization of network, and to reach to the last mile, I think that's what the multimodal gives power to the transportation. With that, sir, if you look at it, uh, we are very fortunate the way India is, sir. Uh, sir, in India, the, the logistic goes wherever there is consumption and manufacturing. And we all think what is the center of the India and how it should be hub and spoke. But if you look at this map, sir, you start your manufacturing from Chennai, you go to Bangalore, which is manufacturing come consumption, you reach to Pune, which is again a kind of consumption manufacturing, come to Mumbai, which is kind of consumption, you go to Ahmedab Baroda, Ahmedabad, Jaipur, Delhi, which then goes into the optimum of the consumption. That's where the whole uh, logistic pattern is going today. And sir, you'll be surprised that Bhivandi is a place which is just 40% of country's road transport cargo hub in Bhivandi. And the GT road and the Agra, Bombay Agra road was the main trunk route which was uh, uh, there. So the multimodal in different form has been operating in this country. But the time has come now where we have to get a regional connectivity to the last mile into the villages. That that's the need of demand. We also have a large coastal. We also have a large road network coming. Quadrantal highway which is going to come to, which you are connecting, sir, north, south, east, west. I think that we need to create a vision for multimodal in this country. And of course, not to the, forget the, your inland waterways vision which is coming in. Sir, in, um, in some part of Kerala, we use the, on backwater, these boats, small boats to deliver a parcel to the houses. So it's been there in small form, in small stage, it's been there. So I think, the, A, we need to create a vision to understand which are going to be the key hubs for multimodal, which are going to be the key port for the multimodal, because not every port can be a multimodal connectivity. We need to establish where the, uh, the consumption and manufacturing will get connect. So the most key important, you, bought G you almost bought GST, and the taxation you improved. But that has not improved the transportation system what we need to do. In terms of the liability aspect, if a multimodal transport goes, the liability aspect is a huge challenge to us. Now, sir, in liability region, we deal with seven different ministries. We are the only industry in this country who deals with six to seven different ministries. We deal with surface, we deal with shipping, we deal with aviation, we deal with commerce, we deal with industry, and we deal with uh, finance and the law, of course, who makes law for us. Now, this ministry, somewhere we get lost because we don't have, uh, you know, which is our grandfather, there in the government, will speak as a one uh, integrated multimodal logistic who can speak it. So, give a simple example. When we, as a multimodal transport, when I move a, a, a cargo on a road, rail, and ship, and when I give one document to the customer, the liability regimes are three different. Railway has a different liability, the road has a different liability, and the, uh, the sea has a different liability. I think we need to solve this in terms of the taxation, uh, uh, the way you sort GST, we need to sort this out. The other aspect of multimodal, sir, is to create the right infrastructure at the right place. Sir, our industry in the courier industry has done very well there. We had set up an apex body, and these apex bodies are setting up the infrastructure at various locations. So we get economy of scale, and our members who are participating also get a lower cost. 
So somewhere, sir, you may, government may consider in terms of making on a PPP model with our apex bodies, where the infrastructure is with the apex bodies. So a gateway or a key infrastructure is shared among the people. Because the challenge what we have, sir, we are highly fragmented industry. Sir, in truck industry, we have 1.5 million truck operators, having four trucks each. We're the largest employer, private sector employer in this country, sir. And sir, in terms of the human power skill, by 2025, we will need roughly an additional 5 million people to come into this industry. And by 2018, we need another half a million people to come to, to handle the growth which you are envisaging, sir. So I think that these are various things which is come in the multimodal. What is in the multimodal, sir, important as I explained to you, sir, where we should put the gateways for the multimodal. Be it Mumbai, be it Digi, be it JNPT. If you go up, is it going to be Kandla? Is it going to be Mandra? Is it Dugo down south? Is it Vaisak? Is it Krishnavattam? Is it Paradip? Is it Hubli? I think that that's where we need to sit together and develop those ports only for the multimodal where there is rail and road connectivity is available. Sir, we haven't touched the aviation today as part of the multimodal. But if you look at it, Dubai, next door to, is using huge multimodal for ship and air. So they have a maximum air uh, charter traffic where consignments go and a container ships go to Dubai from port to the airport straight that container goes on a tarmac, goes onto the airplane, gets distributed all over the world. I think, sir, one other aspect, India has a unique position, and sir, you said it more on a security aspect, but we are businessmen, we look at this business aspect. You are giving to give, sir, connectivity to us to Myanmar, up to Thailand. From point of time, we'll have connectivity to even to Sri Lanka, and we'll have a connectivity maybe to Mauritius or, or Maldives and all. I think, sir, India is ready to assume that role of a distribution point for all the SAR countries. Sir, all, with all SAR countries, you have now come almost in free trade agreement with all these countries. We can become a big manufacturing hub and become sort of a supply for all these countries around with us, which is Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, uh, Myanmar, Sri Lanka. And that's where the great uh, opportunity where we have. And that's where the multimodal infrastructure will play a role. Give us a typical example. Look at Sri Lanka. Uh, which can, today virtually Sri Lanka has no e-commerce and we're just next to neighbor. Now, if the Indian e-commerce company has to distrib get distributed into there, from, from one of our tip point into the, go into the Sri Lanka is question of few hours by boat. And once we go to Jaffna or somewhere where a lot of our Indian origin populations were living there, we can create a distribution hub out of from there going to the whole Sri Lanka. And I think so that will be a big opportunity. And this is a small, medium sized opportunity uh, for uh, enterprise, Indian enterprise, to get into penetrate into this country. Same would be Bangladesh, would be Nepal, would be Bhutan. So I'm not limiting the multimodal when we design only for India, but I think so we have to look at it as a is an Indian subcontinent multimodal where we can do and where we can integrate rail, which you connected railway probably, sir, to Bangladesh. You also have put a bath service now to Bangladesh to go, go through with all the agreements what we have done. So it's a time where we need to look at all this country as one and create a multimodal uh, you know, uh, distribution uh, center where India play a role and put the infrastructure because, sir, your consumption will be so high so the cost of the manufacturing with your Making India program, with our consumption, that all these countries' neighborhood also can get the benefit of the lower cost and get this product at a much cheaper price than probably what they could even import from China. I think so. This is where we need to put our leadership position uh, into establishing where the multimodal is. But the key aspects are three aspects. One, we need to look at it. Uh, what is the domestic multimodal needs? Probably, sir, you need a rail hub in Palanpur, where all the railways, uh, uh, the, the railway distribution can take place. We probably need a uh, hub in Nasik, 
probably to, to redistribute. And of course, Nagpur, which is the key, uh, sir, your constituency, which is again um, are going to emerge. Because, sir, what has happened today, if you look at this, there's more traffic going to the north and the east than the traffic coming from east and north to the west and south. Moment that anomaly goes, the Nagpur will come to a play into a role for a distribution into the north and uh, the east and the uh, and the in the northeast. So the other surprise which we all are going to see is the northeast. I think northeast is going to come as a surprise package for all of us, a multi uh, multimodal logistic operator. It's going to give us power to distribute. It give us going to give an opportunity to reach there, and. On a way, when you're looking into the eastern UP and the Bihar and all, I think this is a place which are ready to get developed and ready to put the market there. And I think so, sir, within our company, we've put a vision now. And our vision is Lux Vision. When the Lux started getting distributed into multimodal, onto your coastal, onto your inter waterways, onto a railway, and then get distributed to the finally, and that's where when our coastal and in, inland waterways and the real multimodal will come. So we, our company is now working in terms of creating this whole network and setup where, where the hubs has to be in collaboration with the Dutch uh, research organization, sir. So we are now looking into various gateways, looking at the consumption, looking at the commodity which goes, and of course, sir, the, the big boost will come to the agro commodity, which is getting wasted today. 30, 37 to 38% floriculture, uh, fruit, vegetables are getting wasted, which would then get saved uh, in a huge way. Also on the agriculture norms, uh, grains and all, if we can do a multimodal in a smart way, would have a save in, uh, no doubt, transportation cost, storage cost, and of course the loss of the cost. So I think, so, sir, I, I won't say much to you. What I want to put you into four basic uh, uh, request first a to set up a multimodal vision and sir country has a huge potential our industry has a huge potential to come and partner with the government to understand which are the hubs which we need to look at in terms of the port we can then partner with the railway ministry and the road ministry which you are sir heading in terms of developing those infrastructure third in terms of the liability regime which we need to sit together. And sir, for there, our suggestion is, which has been pending with, uh, with the government long time, sir, set up a logistic board, which is headed by cabinet secretary. And let all the secretaries of various ministry become the member of that board. And all executive decisions on multimodal can be taken by that board, and they can meet once in a month, which can handle infrastructure, which can handle legislative, which can handle the liability regime, and because, sir, then there will be empowerment to various ministry secretary to give us a solution. Right now, we are all going in circle. So I think that that would be a good idea to set up a logistic board. And, sir, I must compliment. Bharati Janta Party, in all these numbers of years, is the only party who put the logistic in the manifest. And, sir, as, as I said, we have almost like 30 million people who are employed in this industry. First time we got a recognition from a national party to see that this is an industry and no doubt in the last two years all your efforts are going into building infrastructure towards logistic and of course the GST will be the last. So the GST will help taxation but it has to help the, our industry. As I explained, so we are fragmented. We have small people. A guy with a four truck operator operates and so trucker's life is very, very tough. The man goes with the primers with a stout, he stays, his bed is below the truck, he stops somewhere, he cooks his food, and then covers the distance and distance of it. And of course, sir, the, the Cheknaka regime would go now with the GST probably coming in. A Delhi to Chennai truck stops at 79 places, you know, by the time he reaches. I think we need to look at this in, as part of the ease of doing business, sir. And also, in terms of the liability regime, we need to look at the ease of doing business for someone to come. So domestic logistics today has a lot of challenge on the liability regime. And so the last, uh, I think, so if we can put a focus on the domestic logistics by building a centralized agency with your leadership, sir, because you have road and shipping both with you, and the major infrastructure is going to come from you and the railway. 
and if we can put a complete focus to take the logistic, uh, multimodal logistic vision 2020, I think we still have four, uh, four years time to make it. Some work has already been done. If we can uh, institutionalize the work, what we have been done, and make a combined effort, I think the India would emerge not only multimodal logistic for our country, but sir, for the whole Indian subcontinent. And I said that leadership, sir, you need to take this. And that's our plea to you, sir. Thank you very much, sir.